Welcome to the newest episode of Inside AMG, where today we're going to delve deep into the world of motorsport once again, but not just any kind of motorsport, today is going to be all about sim racing. So there are going to be a few experts in today's show, also some well-known faces from the world of motorsport, so there's a lot to look forward to. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey there, Jan, how's it going? Hey, Felix, what are you doing? Just playing some racing games on my mobile phone. No sim racing, though. <laughs> Shall I show you some race simulators? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's get out, come on. Cool. Now, people might recognize you if they know a thing or two about motorsports. I definitely recognize you and remember watching you racing on the circuits of this world. So why don't you kick things off by telling the people at home what your job is at Mercedes-AMG? I mean, I've been a racing driver for more than 20 years and uh, 10 years with AMG. And uh, now, since last year, I'm fully employed here. And uh, I'm the project manager for Wurzel Motorsport. And it's fantastic to be involved in such a program with such a brand. Super cool. I mean, this is a topic that is also very dear to my heart. First of all, for being a motorsports fan. But second of all, for being a fan of virtual racing and player of one or two games for, for many years. So I'm definitely excited for today and what you have to show to us. Uh, we have prepared uh, definitely some program for you, some experts here also for you, because we want to show you the whole program. Uh, we are one of the pillars in Mercedes-AMG Motorsport. First pillar is Formula One, second is GT Racing, and the third one is us, so World Tour Motorsport. And that's what we want to show you today. You're excited about it? Absolutely. Let's go. Cool. Okay, wow. Wow, what a setting this is. I mean, you said you prepared a thing or two, but I didn't expect this. This is, this is super cool, awesome. And we can already see two of the three pillars you were talking about. Formula One and GT racing with GT3 and GT4, but the third pillar, us, World of Motorsport, it's digital. Cool, and you caught me back there playing this mobile game on, on my phone, and that is, well, it is virtual motorsport, but I understand that it goes a lot farther from there. I mean, that's the entry, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody has his phone and apps on the phone, playing games, uh, racing games. Uh, and then from there, you can continue with the console, with the PC, up to the highest end, you know, on the highest simulations and platforms. So it's either way. The hardware is um, getting higher and more competitive, and also uh, with the software side. So it's, it's both sides. That's pretty cool to hear. I mean, for somebody like me who likes to play video games, who likes to play racing games on the phone, but also at home on the console with a controller, with a steering wheel, that this is the, the entryway into virtual motorsport if you want to get involved with that. Yeah, so I mean, every, every boy and girl dreaming about being a racer, you know, and that's the very easy way to get into racing, into motorsport. And uh, from there, um, you can climb up the ladder uh, into, into, into racing, being a professional racing driver. A professional racing driver in terms of sim racing or also in terms of the actual physical cars? Because one question we get asked a lot in the AMG Private Lounge is, is the next logical step from being a professional sim racer automatically to become a racer in actual cars? In general, first of all, you get into motorsport. Either mm -hmm. it's real racing or it's uh, digital racing, virtual motorsport. Um, but I think you have to, have to have a look on both sides itself, you know? it's. Uh, you, you climb up the ladder in real racing, being a professional racing driver at your career end or your, your goal. And the same is in virtual motorsports. So the, the highest end you can, you can achieve is being a professional sim racing driver. And there are a couple of drivers who want to be real racing drivers as well. But I think it's, it's more you know, being the best in your pillar you are in, either it's digital or real. That's pretty cool to hear and also interesting to see how virtual motorsport and esports has evolved. It is a professional discipline in itself. That's pretty cool. 
And you talked a lot about the, the hardware and software components at this pinnacle part of the sport. Can we delve a little deeper into that? You can, for sure, and therefore we also have some expertise uh, from uh, my colleague Alex. Uh, he is very much involved into that part, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's over there at the simulators, and uh, just talk to him. Cool. Jan, thank you very much for this introduction, and we head on over. Hi, Felix. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So Jan already told me you're going to explain the specialties about sim racing in a bit more detail. But what is your job within this virtual motorsport project of AMG? Yeah, together with Jan, I'm the project lead for virtual motorsports and responsible mainly for the licensing topic and the sim topic and the games and the platforms we use. And I can't help but notice, I think there's somebody I recognize and that we've already seen before. Hi, Rafael. How's it going? Hi. All good, you? Very good. I mean, you don't really need an introduction. People already know you as one of the professional GT3 racing drivers for AMG, and we've already met at a 24 hours at Spa, but what's your involvement with sim racing? Yeah, I started to play when I was a kid. Uh, I always been a fan of technology. So when I have time, I always try to use my simulator at home to practice my, my sim skill, let's say, but also my real driving skill, because it's quite quite linked, uh, all the habits when you drive, how you have to brake and how you have to drive actually is, is pretty similar. That's pretty cool. I mean, in terms of adrenaline pumping, adrenaline flow, what's, what gets your juices flowing more? Re sim racing or, or the real car? No, for sure the real car. You cannot restart as in a simulator. It's a bit different, but as, as I said, it's a great tool and I always use it at home. Yes. Super awesome, super awesome. Um, nice to hear that there is this, this connection between, between sim racing and the actual racing in the real car. And I can imagine you as a professional athlete, you're probably just as competitive in the sim as you are in the real car. Yes, but I, I lose quite often against all the <laughs> sim driver, like driver. They, they're pretty strong, they, they practice a lot. I mean, you cannot always win. And I mean, sometimes I, I also win, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> Awesome. Alex, how do you get those details so exact? How do you make it as realistic as possible? It's all about the details, Felix. As you see, I would say the first thing is the hardware. Let's have a quick look at the pedals as an example. So what you probably know from, from uh, gaming is like that you have a pedal which, which is braking over the way. But here we're working with brake pedals which are working like in the real world. You brake via brake force. Mm -hmm. And your muscle can re remember way much better how much force you apply to the brake than how much weight you made. Another very, very important thing on the sim rig is the wheelbase. Mm -hmm. Because as Lelo already mentioned, you're missing G-forces. You cannot simulate G-forces like you have in a real car. So feeling the car, if you lose, for example, traction or whatever, Everything goes through the wheelbase here. So the wheelbase is your connection to the virtual car and a lot of details are transferred through the wheelbase. But the hardware is not everything, it's also about the software. Mm -hmm. The software here is also very, very special and, and high-end because nowadays computing allows us to calculate a lot of information out of the simulation like uh, physics of the car, like a professional tire model where you can exactly see how the tires are behaving wow. on the street. Um, and you can calculate so many details, it's, it's really like very close to the real car. Another very special thing are, for example, laser scanned tracks. And this is what he already mentioned. It's a very good tool to prefer for the real race because the curves, the details, every turn is like a one-to-one -one copy out of the real world and the virtual world. So you can apply everything you know from the virtual into the real world and from the real into the virtual world. That's amazing. I had no idea it goes into that much detail. And, and I already noticed there's an empty seat behind me. Do you think I can have a go? Sure, let's have a try. Awesome.
Felix, are you ready to race me? Race you right away? Okay, that sounds like quite the challenge. No, you you will be fine. I have some math from you. Okay. Hello there. Oh, how are you? Hi. Good. How are you? What's the best? Cool. Why don't you tell the people at home who you are and what you do? So I'm a sim racer from Mercedes AMG Petronas Esports team, and uh, today I'm here to uh, to help you try and beat Rafaela. So uh, yeah, let's do it. And Jano is a true champion, so I'm in very capable hands. Let's go for it. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So this feels very much like home, I gotta say. Very snug, very nice. Let's uh, head into it. We're gonna right. go drive away. It should be the easiest part. No crashes so far. <laughs> That's good. First 100 meters are done. <laughs> Turn one should be first gear. Um, first gear, okay. We can go through some of the basics on the outlap. This is not uh, done for time anyway. This corner should be second gear. Okay. And then uh, try to not hit the brake too hard in that left hand leg. So try and keep the rear stable and not lock up. And then this one should be second gear all the way through. And then on the apex, you should be able to go to third gear. All right. A little bit of a rest before uh, you head into this downhill left right. Should be third gear for this left hander and then second for the right hill. Um, right hander. Got it. Or we get an exit right, it's downhill, so you might experience some understeer on the exit. Mm -hmm. So uh, important to not get on the throttle too early. And then to try to break as straight as possible for this one. Mm -hmm. use, use the inside camera a little bit, so you would be able to carry more speed. And that, that, that's what happened now. Ah. Um, too early on the throttle and then you pick up some understeer. So try to not pick up the throttle too early. And then the tricky chicane. Braking should be at uh, 100 boards in the right, third gear. Third gear, got it. And you should be able to keep it third. Again, it's a little bit, track falls away here, so you might experience some under there on that exit. All right, gotta give it the beans. <laughs> now this is all full throttle. This is all easy full throttle. Next corner should be third gear. As you can see, get half a second there, but just being patient with the throttle. Lost it. So what you did there was you, you, you pitched the car a little bit too much. Yeah. And then the back end came up. And then in such a fast car, it's really hard to control. I just pretty much go with the flow and hope for the best. <laughs> sure, you're faster than half it first. I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'd say I feel ready okay. for our challenge. Nice. <laughs> Rafael's only like one second ahead, so I'll catch him. Don't push, worry. Push him into mistake. <laughs> He's all under control, don't worry. <laughs> Oh, nice personal best to sector three. Nice one that can wait, you Felix. <laughs> Remember, you're very fast in the last sector, so maybe you can still finish ahead. I mean, let's go to Felix. Huh? You now I'm actually trying to start <laughs> finish time. <laughs> So, of course, I mean, I'd like to know a little bit more about the life of an F1 eSports world champion. How do you practice? How much do you practice? What do you use? What sort of equipment? Do you have something like that at home? I got a ton of questions for you. Yeah, I've got very similar equipment at home. Um, it's just the best you can get. And um, yeah, that's what I use for four or five hours per day practicing. Mm -hmm. um, 
you can practice more, but not very, very useful. So uh, I stick to those four or five hours, very effective. And um, yeah, I work very close together with Mercedes, of course, to try and get the most out of it. So um, yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a very cool relationship then you have with Mercedes because like Alex explained earlier, you guys can go testing without having to worry about uh, using up too many tires or using too much fuel because it's all virtual. I mean, that's a, a great symbiosis of, of real world testing and sim racing as well. Yeah, you can just unlimit, unlimited practice and just get the most out of it, which is still very difficult. Of course, you lack some, some G-force um, and per perception of where you are, uh, which makes it a little bit harder. But then again, you have a lot more practice to do, so um, you catch up that way uh, pretty easily. So Nice. And I'd say if we got an F1 champion, F1 esports champion in the house with us today, how about you race Rafael now? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. Give him yeah. a real challenge. So. Awesome. Already warmed up the seat for you. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> So crazy what these guys can do without having any of the g-force in their buttocks which is one of the most important parts of a racing driver to feel the car with their butts they do it all with their hands everything comes through the steering column and they still have this amazing feel for the car But there are some stylistic differences, I'd say. Very interesting. Of course, materials, material is completely identical. Identical sims and identical cars that we're racing here. Okay, this already looks a lot quicker than what I did. Pump to watch. Leonardo still has to beat your time. Who put some pressure on you? I got an validation. <laughs> got to deal with all the difficult circumstances, just like in real life. They said, BOP is different. For him, yeah. it's a lower BOP. Did you go up to you, did? I think mine is the 207 that's in there. <laughs> I like my dad almost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm as quick as your dad. That's also not too bad. This is Yano's last chance to beat Rafael's time, late on the brakes for that last chicane. In third, ooh, that was nice. Breaking for the last corner. And back on the start finish straight. And there we go. There we go, across. Nice. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jano. Also, thank you very much, Rafael. That was, that was truly a great experience. I mean, Getting to race against you, wow, that was just awesome. And Jano, that coaching, really, really cool. So your best lap time was at the end? 55.3. 55.3, you had a? 55.2? I didn't check. No, I was 56. Be real life or virtual, <laughs> racing drivers will always stay racing drivers. I had a 207, by the way. That was my best time. But thanks again, guys. That was well, really thank cool. Thank you so much for that experience. That was awesome. So if, you've got, if you guys like what you've seen today, don't forget to like the video. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, drop us comments down below for what you would like us to shoot next. So yeah, until the next one, bye-bye. <laughs>